Test one, two. All right, there we go. The seal shark, thank you very much for letting me know. Uh, it, the, the mic has this thing where sometimes in OBS it gets disconnected. There we go. Uh, I think you guys should be able to hear me now. Uh, can we hear the game? I don't see any audio output from the game at the moment. Uh, properties. Yeah, can you guys hear the little little bits of... Um, can you hear the little bits of noise from the... Let's go into the VAB here. Okay, I see the music coming streaming through now. Okay, so let me let me do my welcome again. Uh, welcome back everybody to the uh, the KSP Noob Stream. This is episode nineteen, and I see we've got some folks in the chat here. Distracticus Prime, the Seal Shark Productions, Senor Hepulio, and anyone else. Wicked is here. Uh, Radu Fierro is here. Welcome guys. Good to have you in the chat. Smooth jazz. There we go. Okay. So what I was saying <laughs> before I realized that my mic wasn't working was last time we were able to land on Minmus and do a bunch of science at our rotating uh, science station, our orbiting science station. So we have tons of science available. We unlocked a few things. And our next goal is to set up a refueling station there. We'd like to be able to uh, fuel up a Duna vehicle or possibly an Eve vehicle or maybe even a Jewel vehicle. There's lots of places we'd like to go. And we'd like to refill our tanks after escaping Kerbin's orbit, uh, uh, gravity well. Um, so we want to set up refueling on Minmus. And the first thing we need for that is to get a polar orbit with a surveyor uh, and use that to begin scanning the planet for resources. So that's what we're going to work on today. Let's go ahead and start with a fairing. Let's see if we can use the small fairing. I'd like to keep this uh, satellite fairly small if we can. So we'll pop this survey scanner on top of it and see if we can build a fairing around it. Seems like the first place we can actually get it to go is right there. Okay, so that's gonna be that's gonna work. Uh, it's a there's a little bit of a space underneath here, but that's probably okay. So we have our uh, we have our surveying ob object, uh, the M700 survey scanner. And we need to get this into a polar orbit around Minmus. So let's see what we can do with some of our new tech. Uh, we'll start with command and control. So we're going to need a service bay here. Like so. And if we zoom in and open this up, uh, then we can place some uh, command and control in here. We're going to need a couple things. We're going to need at least a one big battery. I think the ZK-1 with a thousand charge should do the trick. Uh, and then we're going to need... Actually, let's put that... No, that's fine where it is. Then we're going to need a command pod here. And the Probo Dobodyne Hex has been good to us, so let's uh, go with that. We're also going to need uh, some kind of solar panel to recharge and some communicatrons to uh, be able to relay our scientific data back. Let's switch our symmetry on and pop this in here like that, and then we'll angle it just a bit. Uh, we want the rotate tool. There we go. Actually, that's not going to, well, we need to move that in now so that it's inside the, the service doors. Let's see, can we get an angle that works? That looks good. Let's close that. It's not popping out. We can extend it just fine. There we go. Okay, so that's going to be fine. Uh, now we need some solar panels. And we don't need much. Let's go back into electrical here. Now, this thing is kind of neat. Uh, this generates 8.3 charge per second. Let's get one of these. Uh, that is quite a big boy, but we're going to have a rocket here anyway. Now, is that okay? Is that going to get hit by aerodynamic forces? I guess it'll be protected by the fairing on the way up. Uh, we do not need two of these. So let's, uh, let's remove this from symmetry. Let's just place it like that. There we go. So the masses shouldn't be too bad. 
And when we extend it, it's going to look like that. So we need to rotate it, I think, so it's not blocked or obstructed. Or do we? Which way do we want it to face here? Uh, Wicked says, hello, can I subscribe to your channel? Of course, of course you can. I'd very much appreciate that if you did. Rudder says, guys, I already fully upgraded my KSC on my career. Next top is Eve for me. Very cool. All right, so you've got all your buildings up to their max level. And you're headed to Eve. Impressive. That's your hard career, right? Let's, uh... Hold on. Let's do it like that. And let's replace that because it got off-centered a little bit. That looks good. Now, what if the doors are open? That's not going to obstruct it at all. All right, let's retract that. And let's close that up. Okay, so this is starting to look good. Let's put a fuel tank on here now. We've got command and control. We've got electricity. Um, if we keep this piece fairly small, we shouldn't need more of a reaction wheel than the... Um, does, that, does the hex have one? I think so, right? Reaction wheel. It does have a reaction wheel. Okay, so we should be okay. Uh, let's put a fuel tank on here. And I think we want something fairly simple. This is a liquid fuel fuselage. This has liquid fuel and oxidizer. Now, if we go with the nerve engine that we unlocked, this guy. The nerve atomic rocket motor. Despite the big scary trefoil painting, uh, note that the LV is the only LV series to run solely on liquid fuel, so we don't need oxidizer. This also has an ISP of 500 in a vacuum and a thrust of 60 kilonewtons, so it may be enough, one of these may be enough to fly this thing around if we can get it to orbit. Let's see what happens if we just throw a jet, and a jet tank on here, so only liquid fuel. Uh, we don't need oxidizer. So the M Mark Zero liquid fuel fuselage contains 50 fuel. That's very small. What about this one? So if we do something like that and then throw the nerve engine on, there's the nerve engine here. What are we looking at? Our TWR is only 0.23, which is pretty low, but if we look at our Delta V in a vacuum, that's 3,000. That's very nice. I am concerned about the TWR here. 0.2 is pretty, pretty low, but if we get this into orbit, it should be okay. Um, the other thing we could consider... Now, do we have... What if we go ahead and get the one of those... Where's, the, where's that? Structural? What if we get one of those tricouplers? Yeah, one of these bad boys. If we do something like that, and then we get three of the smaller ones... Okay, so this one is the... We want the jet engine. The Mark Zero liquid fuel fuselage and the Mark One. So how tall are these? These are much smaller. So this is three of these. This would give us a much higher TWR and tons and tons of, uh, of fuel, or uh, a DV, I think. So if we go with this... Now our TWR is a much more respectable 1.09. And we still have 3,400 DV. So I quite in, I quite like that. Hmm. So this thing could really get around, right? So now the question becomes, how do we launch it to orbit? Uh, and also, if we come in here, maybe I rotate this just a bit, like that? Yeah. Okay. And then we need to open this up, and I always forget this when I'm placing the, the cores. This needs to be rotated as well, like that. Okay. That looks, that's starting to look pretty good to me. So here's our probe. Now we just need to lift it to orbit. Now how can we, can we attach something to this? Can we attach this thing to the bottom of something? Uh, if we have a larger fuel tank for lift, can we kind of snap that onto the bottom? So if we go with a Rocco Max, something like this, we can do that, but it connects to the wrong thing. So how do I get these three to be centered on this? 
I guess I need... I need some way to position this on a thing. Uh, let's see. Nerves are heavy and slow, but super efficient. Once in orbit, your TWR can be great, uh, less than one. I usually save engine mass and use something like 0.3. Interesting. Uh, Radu says, nerves are my life. And Senor Hepuryu says, you can use an engine plate to put multiple engines. But when you go to stage them, they can stage as one stage without multiple decouplers. You'll need some structure between the nerves. So I don't have an engine plate. I do not have the uh, expansion that gives that. So I don't have it, and there's no way for me to unlock it. So are you guys suggesting that maybe I don't need all of this, all of these engines? I don't need a TWR this high? 0.2 seems really low, though. We had that on, um, we had that on another craft, and it was really hard to deal with. Uh, so I'm not sure how I would connect this such that there was another stage below it. TWR, don't, TWR doesn't matter on space. All right, fair enough. Then let's just stick with our original vision here. Let's just put the one, uh, the one nerve engine. And, oh, oh, you know what? I think, ah, okay, so the TWR is 0.23 in atmosphere, but when I swapped it to vacuum, then we can see it's actually at 1.0. That's much better, Never mind. So we're fine with just this, and 3,000 dV is more than enough. Okay, so now we just need to lift this into orbit, and this should be much easier now. Um, we can go ahead and put a better engine on here. So let's go back into fuel tanks now, and let's get some, uh, I think some of these. We'll need these to get out of the atmosphere. Uh, okay, so we need to lift this up. Where's the central piece here? It's the, uh, the fairing. Let's throw this on. And then let's take a look at our center of mass on this beast. Oh, it's kind of right nice in the middle. All right, so let's throw a reaction wheel in there. Uh, we'll go to command and control, and we'll get the advanced inline stabilizer here. And then for our engine, we want something with a lot of kick. Uh, let's see what we have that's the right size. So we have the Reliant. That's the right size. How much uh, thrust does this have? 205 kilonewtons. What else do we have? We've got the Skipper. That has 568. I don't know if I really want... Uh, we could use an adapter here. Uh, let's move the nerve engine out and see what we're working with here. 2400 to orbit seems pretty good. TW TWR of 2.91. Uh, let's put an adapter on this for aerodynamic reasons. So where's the adapters? Is that coupling? Structural? Yeah, here we go. The Rockomax brand adapter. Throw that there and that there. There we go. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then we can throw a couple uh, extra asparagus style boosters on here, maybe. Or I, I guess we don't really need it with that much TWR. So the only question is, can this thing fly straight? Right? Can we can we actually launch it, or is it too too gnarly? Uh, this TWR is a little too high. Let's bring the thrust limiter down. 1.8 is much more manageable. And I suppose uh, we're also going to need a decoupler here. I forgot that. Uh, decoupling. There we go. Okay. So that's starting to look good. If we put some fins on this, maybe we can try to launch it. It's very tall, but maybe that's okay. Uh, do you want to wait 10 minutes for a 200 mill millisecond burn, meter per second burn? Yes, nice, that's plenty. If you forget the decoupler, there we go. Actually, you want the reaction wheel as far as possible from the center of mass. 
I'm pretty sure you're incorrect about that. I, the, the, the work that I've done has shown that you want the reaction wheel very, like, as close to the center of mass as possible. Uh, use a solid rocket booster as the first stage and put some fins to control it. With fins, I guess you can say it's fin. Yes, a little French joke there from Radu. Appreciate that. I could throw some SRBs on here. Uh, we don't want too much power, though, going up. We've got the thoroughbreds, the kickbacks, the fleas, and the uh, hammers. I don't know if we want the thumpers. The other thing is we need to make sure that this engine's a little wide, so wherever we couple them, we need to make sure that it doesn't... Uh, do we actually want... Do we want these? Maybe if we limit their uh, output, it could work. We could try a couple of... A uh, couple of these. Sure, why not? So if we put a couple of kickbacks on here, or rather thumpers, let's see what these do to us here. Uh, that's pushing us, pushing us up real high. Let's go back to sea level. So these will get us, that's actually really nice, 1.3 and 665. That gets us up a bit. Uh, and then, we can connect up these in the second stage and fire this off with our 1.58. That'll actually be more once we get rid of the these things. All right, let's try something like this and see how we do. Let's throw some nose cones on and let's do some fins. Uh, let's see, we want winglets nice and low here. How do we, how can we make this work? Something like this. That could work. Uh, let's rotate these a bit. And then move them in. That looks pretty good. I think that should be good. And we'll throw, I don't know, we'll throw a couple fins over here as well. Just, to, just for good measure. Just to give ourselves a little extra control. I don't know if this is going to work, guys. This might explode and this might not be able to launch. It might tip over and slam into the ground. Uh, but let's give it a shot. Okay, so uh, this is going to be Surveyor 1. Let's save that and let's see what happens if we launch it. Wish me luck. Rock is just too low carbon orbit. For your fins to work, you need at least three fins. You need your aerodynamic center as low as possible. Okay. So the aerodynamic is there. If I take this off, then it's much lower. Okay, so we don't need those ones on the boosters. Now the other question is, are these boosters gonna burn these fins off? They might. They might overheat and explode. I don't know. Well, failing is half the fun of Kerbal Space Program, so let's just uh, let's just get this on the launch pad. Uh, let's get some stabilizers on it, and then we'll go. Uh, so structural. Stability enhancers. And let's do it. Let's check our staging. We've got the boosters. Then we separate those and fire the central rocket. That's down here. Yep. And then we have our nerve engine for fine maneuvering in outer space. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's see what happens. Probably, yes. Only your basic fins are that sensitive. Okay. So the winglet should be okay. Uh, let's go to sunrise and let's launch this thing and see whether see how it behaves. Well, that's cool. I never noticed that. You can actually see the rotation in warp mode. Okay. F5, Z, T, and let's launch. Oops. Okay. Uh, I see a problem. <laughs> Revert to vehicle assembly. So what happened there? These have a TWR of 1.3. That should be enough to get off the launch pad. They were wobbling a bit. We didn't limit these. Uh, let's put some struts on and see if that helps. Let's get a strut there. Is that centered? Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, the, I didn't have symmetry on. Hold on. Uh, let's go from there over to here. Uh, 
I can't, it's so hard to tell when things are centered here. That looks pretty good, okay. And let's do one more down here. Should we try that again? Uh, the rocket looks cursed, not optimal. You need to put struts. I've seen lots of crappy looking rockets, but this is next level. No offense. Okay. Yeah, let's try this again. ZT and launch. So why why does it not have enough thrust? Oh, is the engine is the engine blocking is this part blocking some of the thrust, maybe? And these things are overheating. Huh. Revert flight to vehicle assembly. Wait a minute. Maybe I'm looking at the TWR in the wrong thing. Sea level. So 1.3 should be enough. I'm a little confused about that. Hmm. Not certain why. Okay. Let's try uh, let's try changing the symmetry here to three. And let's see if that helps. Plus it'll get us out of the out of the business of um, of smacking our, our, our plumes into our fins. So if we get three of these instead, does this work? Rotate wing so not under the rockets. The skipper's not running. I think you put it on vacuum. And I think the booster thrust is landing on the fins, so no net thrust. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the either the adapter or the fins were blocking some of the thrust there. Let's see if this does better. There we go. That's looking more like it's going to work. Okay. And actually removing the struts forced them to kind of push inwards a little bit. All right. So here we go. Let's try to get to orbit here. Okay. Let's, uh, let's push it forward just a bit. It's trying to, it's very much trying to curve. It's trying to turn, and I don't know why. All right, let's, let's lock to prograde. Well, those burned out at just the right time. Yeah, it's having trouble aligning itself. The reaction wheel is not really strong enough here. Okay, so let's revert the flight. I think the problem there was the, uh, I think it was twisting because of this thing right here. I think that's why it was trying to twist. And I think we need a better reaction wheel. Or a stronger set of reaction wheels here to keep keep ourselves centered. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to grab this and take it off. Let's add a couple more reaction wheels to see if we can improve the uh, the, the performance here. Uh, where is the piece? Okay. Let's bring this back over here like this. Let's look at our center of mass. Yeah, okay. So if a couple more reaction wheels might help us here. Uh, counteract this, this twist that we're getting from, the, uh, from this thing. It's not much, but it's enough. We might have to replace that. Let's see if uh, the additional reaction wheels help here. Let's try this again. Uh, at least it's not Atlas V ha that have asymmetrical boosters. Weird, no control authority until the skipper starts up. I will eat, be right back. Okay, enjoy your food. It's still twisting. Yeah, it's, it's twisting quite a lot. Yeah, I'm really having trouble controlling it. We're going basically straight up here. 
Oh man, that was a that was a mess. Okay. Revert flight to vehicle assembly. Maybe we need more uh, fins down here to help control control it better. If you move the skipper to stage two, the first, the gimbal nozzle will solve your control problems. Yeah, I guess that's true. That does put our TWR much too high though. So now we want to limit these way down. 1.64 so the boosters will run a lot longer okay maybe you're right maybe the gimbal will help and it'll, it'll change the center of thrust as well to further back all right let's try it with all of these engines burning at the same time now let's see what this does boosters lower down would help too oh you think so you might be right yeah okay I'm just concerned about them slamming into the uh, engine here when uh, when we're at launch. Okay, so now everything's firing. And yes, it's already much, much more controllable. Okay. Let's get a little bit of a burn turn going. Okay, this is, this is better. This is much better. Lock to prograde here for a bit. And everything's burning at the same time. We want to start pushing down a little bit. Come on, stabilize. Come on. I know you can do it. Wow. Nope. Still not the easiest craft to control here. We've got a very high APO here, so let's come down a bit. Well, that's what we've got to work with. Whoa. Uh-oh. That's not good. What's happening? We've completely lost the ability to control. It just has no... Yeah, okay, so the... Uh... The hex core can't control anything. It just doesn't have... Wow, this is a total disaster. All right, revert to launch assembly. <laughs> uh, if you move the skipper to stage two, the first, the gimbal nozzle will solve your control problems. We already read that. Boosters lower down would help. Throttle down until stage separation. All right, so let's move the boosters down. Let's do. Let's get that done. Because I think you're right about that. Let's let's redo these. Okay. So there's that taken care of. And then this thing with the nerve engine, I couldn't control it at all. So we definitely do need a re another reaction wheel here. Uh, let's take this off. Because this is what? That's the engine? Yeah. Where's the center of mass here? Right there. Okay. So let's throw one more reaction wheel uh, in here. And let's try this build. Okay. So we've got all three engines firing at once. Then we separate those out. And then this one, this one uh, only burns a little bit longer, though, is the problem, to me, at least. I think I will move this back to its own stage. Just for now. Just to see, you know, if that makes things better. And then hopefully that reaction wheel fixes our problems with the final stage. Let's try this. Nerve doesn't have gimbal nozzle? Uh, does it? That's a good question. No, it doesn't. Look at that. 
It does not have a gimbal. Interesting. So yeah, we, we definitely need the reaction wheel to be able to control it. Uh, let's see how this does. Well, that's not getting it done. Are these boosters just not powerful enough? I can I can put a different set of boosters on. For sure. Let's try something with a little bit more kick. So we were using the backs. Uh, the next one up would be the kickback, right? We don't want the thoroughbreds. That's too that's too much. Let's try the kickbacks. Uh, and then we'll move these up just a little bit here. That is off center. There we go, like that. Okay, let's see if this is more effective. Yeah, I was just being a little bit underwhelming there. So, our first stage TWR is 1.9 now. Maybe that's better. Then we get rid of them and fire the main engine, which has kind of been uh, sucked into the ground here. Let's bring this a little bit lower. Okay, let's try this. No, that's off-center again. Hang on. Sometimes it's hard to tell when I'm playing the game when things are aligned correctly. How does that look? Okay, that looks fine. Let's try this. Nerve does not gimbal. Yeah, okay. Okay, so we don't have struts, but this is definitely getting us off the surface here in a much more effective fashion. Let's pull it down just a bit. Okay, it's twisting again. Locked to prograde here. And let's try and push it down a little bit more. Nope, too much. Yikes. That was almost good. I got I, I tried too hard uh, for the gravity turn there. Uh Radu says, guys, I basically completed my career right now. What rules should I add to make it harder? Interesting. Uh, let me think about that for a minute. That staging is a little bit messed up. Okay. So we can push it a little bit, just not too much. Not too much too early here. Just enough. Okay. Let's correct our trajectory. Push it down just a little bit more. Not too much. Nope. Too much. Too much. Too much. Wow. That is obnoxious. Maybe I do need the struts. Maybe they're vibrating too much here. Uh, let's let's go ahead and throw some struts on here real quick. Did I, did I lose the, yeah, I could also put some more winglets on it. I think we get rid of these and we throw them on the boosters. Uh, so let's do some strutting. Structural. Let's 
something like something like that that looks good and then maybe something like this Sure, that's fine. That should keep it a little bit more stable. And then we'll throw the winglets over on the boosters. And that means we're going to have to move the stability enhancers to the side like that. That's a little bit better, I think. And then these should be in the same stage, right? Yeah, okay. And then that's that thing with those. Okay, I'm going to keep trying this until I get it to work. Uh, any or all the realism overhaul mod suite? Guess who's back? Hey, welcome back to Seal Shark. I play no mods. Maybe 50% funding, 50% science, 120% heating and no quick saves. I, that sounds like a lot of... Uh, yeah, that's right. You can go into your um, you can go into the settings when you create the game. You can go into the custom settings and make it harder that way. I forgot about that. That's a good point. Okay, let's just push this down just a bit, and then let's not get too greedy here with this gravity turn. Let's just if we push it down just enough and it doesn't go out of control, that'll be fine. Slowly pull it down, and then let's lock to prograde for the rest of the rest of the boosters, I guess. Yeah, it does want to twist a little bit there. Push it down just a skosh more here. I think we can get away with a little bit more. There we go. Okay, that's better. to 22. Big Apo, but that's okay. That's not the worst thing in the world. Okay. Now we need to... Now we need to reorient ourselves a little bit. Let's go to stability here. We're 50k up. The atmosphere shouldn't be too bad on us here. Let's punch it sideways if we can. Okay, yes. We're high enough that the atmosphere isn't screwing us over now. Let's come here. Okay. Uh, let's burn just a little bit at this to get our periapsis going and get our orbital speed up. Okay, quick save here, and let's just do a quick maneuver at AP and see what it's going to take to circularize. Uh, something like that looks good. Okay, so start burn in two minutes, burn for 1200 meters per second. Very good. So we'll have 36 left. Okay. Let's lock to prograde and let's warp forward. And now it wants us actually not on prograde. It wants us on this uh, this maneuver node. So let's lock. Let's uh, aim at that, and let's do this forty-seven second burn here. Okay, we're about ready here. It is a pretty powerful rocket. We'll burn just a little bit early here because we're... We are right on the line there with the periapsis we've plotted. And we're pulling our prograde marker down onto the maneuver node. That's fantastic. Okay, so a little bit of trial and error there trying to get this thing out of... Uh, 
out of the gravity well, but we got it in the end. Thanks to your help, guys. Uh, robotic stuff from the DLC. The visual mods don't change any specs, but look really nice. I always wanted to make a rotating moon base, but the robotics details have me stumped. Yeah, I've been thinking I might grab some of the, uh, the visual overhaul mods, maybe. Uh, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to... There we go. All right, so we've got a stable orbit. Fantastic. And we've got 35, 3,600 uh, meters per second of delta V left, which is really good. Let me quick save there. So, uh, let's go ahead and... That's not even our main engine either. That's, uh, that's not even our, our nerve engine. That was the, um, that was this thing, the main, the skipper. So next we need to get to Minimus or Minimus and yeah, science station one is still there. Interesting. One thing I was thinking I would like to try is I'd like to see if I can figure out how to do a gravity turn or a gravity assist rather off of the moon. So if we take a look at just a normal, if we were to burn at periapsis here, right? If we start burning and head out in the direction of Minmus, and then we start sliding this around a little bit, at some point we get a moon encounter, I think. Let's go a little bit further. Yeah, there's a moon encounter. Okay. So if we if we check this out, we can see as we as we get closer and closer to periapsis of the moon, our our orbit grows larger and larger, right? So if we go past the encounter, we're back down here, but within the encounter, look at look at all the free DV we can get uh, from a gravity assist. Where's the largest one? Yeah, see, something like that. So I think if we zoom in on the moon here now and then adjust our adjust our periapsis so we're very close. See, that's too much. Let me scale this down. We get bent more and more, but our final orbit, now we're on an escape trajectory. So that, that gravity assist is really nice. Uh, let's bring that actually back a little bit. And let's see if we can tweak it so that it kind of pushes us out to the Minmus orbit. See, something like that gets us out to Minmus's orbit for very cheap because the gravity assist pushes our, our AP way out. Interesting. Very interesting. So now the question is, how do we line everything up in such a way that uh, Minmus is there when we get there, right? I don't know how you do that. Let's see. Uh, I always wanted to make a rotating moon base. Uh, Josway, a coast phase is legit. I've been testing the Eve lander for two hours. The new version of Eve is really amazing. Eve is my favorite planet. I mean the mod, environmental visual enhancement. Sorry. Oh, okay. I thought Eve got a revamp. Uh, so the Eve mod you're talking about. So this is this is not going to work for us. And, uh, oh, you know what, guys? I am having a little bit of an upset tummy this morning and suddenly insisting that I take a break. So we're going to take a short break here. My apologies. I'll be back as quick as I can.
And we're back. Apologies for that, folks, but sometimes when nature calls, she leaves a nasty voicemail. Now, let's get back into the game here. Uh, so, I think what I want to try to do... Now, as I recall, the correct way to set up... Let's set up a basic Minimus encounter to start. Um, let's focus back in on our ship, and let's say we come around here and add a maneuver, and just let, let's see what it takes to get to Minimus without the gravity assist. Oh! I accidentally throttled up there. I did not want to do that. I have no idea which direction I was facing or what that did to my orbit. <laughs> that was a mistake, but I caught it quick, fairly quickly. Uh, like I was saying, let's just set up a basic maneuver here and try to get to Minimus and see how much it would cost us. So if we did something around here and started to burn and went out around there, right? Uh, let's set this as our target. And let's fiddle around with this a little bit. So we're kind of in the neighborhood. That is what? That is a Kerbin Escape. Okay. Where is our friend Minmus? There we go. Okay, so that's closest approach. Target position at closest approach. That doesn't seem right. It's going to travel all the way around Kerbin. Closest approach, target position, right. So we go a little bit more that way and push out a bit. Uh, what's going on here? Am I too, I'm too low on the scale. Okay. Why am I not getting an encounter here? I've done this a bunch of times. Ah. That's not what I want. I wanted to drag this thing. Let's turn this way down, I guess. I'm going too far. Where is our little friend? Am I kind of, uh, am I, I've done this before. I'm not sure what's happening. I, I, can't seem to find the right encounter. Hmm. Maybe it moves faster around... Well, the it shouldn't be that, that fast. Yeah, it should be... Okay, so somewhere around there? Am I... Am I crazy? What's going on here? Have I... Have I completely forgotten how this... How this works? Closest approach... Wait, closest approach is over here? Yeah, this is... This is a mess. I don't know what's going on. Uh, let's see. Going back to Ohio, Minmus has a smaller sphere of influence, so it's harder to encounter. Intellectual, say, hill sphere. Yeah, what about the, what about the angles that I want? I thought we wanted it at around 45 degrees. So we want, we want something around here, right? It's not really showing me the closest approach that I expect to see. If we head out, oh wait, I think maybe it was there briefly. If we head out in this direction... And now let's fine-tune this. Hmm. Do 
Do we want to go further? Or less, like further around or less far around? It's not really giving me what I need here. Uh, you know what it might be? It might be that I haven't done my plane change. Target position at closest approach. Guys, I'm really struggling here. I'm having trouble setting up this this burn. Do we want it to be ahead of us? Or be, maybe that's the problem. I'm, no, no, no. It should be ahead of us. No, it should be behind us because it takes us time to get out there. Feels like something like Something like that should be about right. 45 degrees-ish. It's not quite 45. Something like that feels like it should be working. Uh, let's just correct the plane change here. No, that's all wrong. Gosh. I'm not even getting a closest approach, so I can't see, I can't like tweak it down, you know, uh, or up. Okay, there we go. Now we're starting to get something. So if we go this fast, it's gonna be ahead of us. That's kind of, all right, that's kind of what I thought. Let's push that way. And then what, slow down? Go faster? Let's get back to where we were. We had the encounter or approach here, so if we go this speed, it's going to be ahead of us. So if we go at more of an angle and then slow down just a little bit, or maybe speed up a little bit, it was getting it was getting closer there briefly. Uh, so if we go faster, we get closer by a little bit. That doesn't seem right. Let's dial it in. Maybe I should do my plane change right now. Maybe I should, maybe that's what I should use my uh, my Delta V for it. Let me, yeah, let me try and fix the the, uh, the plane change. Maybe that'll make things easier because I've always done that in the past first. So maybe that'll help. And we've got 335 meters per second left on this bad boy anyway. So let's come over to the descending node and try and get this a little bit closer. Let's add a maneuver here to uh, burn a little bit. Uh, let's push that up. That's the wrong direction. Let's zero that out. All right, so let's do this. Let's get our plane change close to zero here. Not a, we don't actually want it exactly at zero. But something like that is fine. Okay, so this is a six second burn. Let's, let's do this maneuver. This is going to use up most of our remaining DV. Let's bring this down a bit more. That gets us a 22 second burn. 
maybe 15, 27. All right, that's manageable. So if we warp forward to that maneuver, we can get our plane change done. And then maybe I'll have more luck trying to set up this encounter. That's how I've always done it in the past. So maybe that's what I'm missing. Okay. And then there we go. Just a few seconds and let's do our burn. Ahead, right, lead the target. That's it, your orbit goes south, the minimum is too far. Fix the inclination first. Yeah, I think that's it, Distracticus. I think that's what's screwing me up here. All right, let's take a look now. So now we're at negative two degrees. Maybe now we'll have more luck. Although I think this is gonna mean we can't do the gravity assist that I was thinking about with the moon, but maybe that's too advanced for me still. Uh, okay, so now we want it to be at about 45 degrees, right? So if this is the top and that's left, that's kind of a 45 degree angle, maybe more like that. So let's come down to here. Let's put a maneuver here. And let's see if this is a little bit easier now. Uh, let's start with 50 meters. And let's bring that down now and fine tune it. See right there, there's an encounter right there. That's all we needed, okay. So we're not gonna be able to do this thing with the moon, uh, which I was hoping to do. I was trying to figure out how I could use a gravity turn or gravity assist with the moon but it's not going to be available here so the moon is going to be ahead of us i suppose i could still kind of let me save this here so we can get back to it but i could still kind of try to fiddle around with this a little bit see if we can make it happen so when is the moon going to be here when can we encounter the moon It's moving far to, it's it's on the far side of the planet, right? So it's, move, it's not moving fast enough to help us here. So if I bring it around, eventually we'll get an encounter with the moon. Yeah, see, it's moving too slowly. But it should be moving much faster than, than Minmus, right? So what happens if we... Let's just wait. Let's just do an orbit here, um, or maybe a few. So let's put another maneuver here. And now let's see what happens if we bump this forward. Like, so let's get roughly in the right direction here. So we're, it, uh, it's sort of like that-ish. And we push it out a little bit, right? And now we start skipping it forward by an orbit or two. See that? Okay, there it is. There we get a moon encounter. Now the question is, can we tweak that or use that to get a Minmus encounter as well? Hang on. Now where is Minmus at this point? So there's kind of, there's an encounter with the moon. Can we turn that into a gravity burn or a gravity turn that gets us to Minmus? I don't know, but let's find out. Does that, what does that do? Oh, that really messes up our inclination. Okay, so yeah, this is, this is beyond me, I think. This is beyond what I can do. Let's just load up our quick save where we have the actual encounter and let's do that. Uh, let's see, fix the inclination first. Although it's more efficient to cheat a little, do your injection burn close enough, then fix inclination further out when you're slower. 
So we're gonna we're gonna give up on the gravity uh, burn thing that we were working on, and we're just gonna go out there and do our polar orbit and check things out. So let's focus the view here, and let's see let's fix this so that we're going into a polar orbit. So uh, you know what we we're going to need to do uh, some overith burns first anyway. So let's worry about that later. Uh, let's change this down to what do we have? 118. Let's go into the. We go to the map view and we go to the maneuver one. We're going to need to do some uh, overith effect here to make this efficient. So let's just start with, I guess, the 118 we have left. And then we'll figure out the rest of it later. Let's just do this. Actually, yeah, let's do this. Okay. So this is going to be pure prograde 118. It's going to push our orbit out a little bit. Let's just get there. And let's do our burn. See, are we facing the right way? Is this going to be on target at the time of the burn? I think it is. There we go. And we just burn out the rest of our fuel here. Okay, there's the first one done. Now, we can throttle down and stage the rest. So now we've got our final vehicle here. Here's our engine. You know what else we could do is we could extend this now. So that, as soon as we get into the sunlight, we'll be, uh, we'll be charging up. Which side of it is? Oh, it, it tracks and turns. That's really interesting. Okay. And why is this, why does this look off center? Oh, that's really strange. I didn't do that on purpose, but this thing is off center somehow. <laughs> Maybe that's why it was twisting so much. Oh yeah, this thing has way more mass than that little solar panel. Look, look at this. I don't know why it's like this, but it's way offset. Look at that. It's, that's so weird. All right, so that was a mistake. I didn't realize I had done that. Okay, let's come back and let's come back over here and do another burn here of like 300 meters per second or so. Uh, let's make sure we're in the right, let's make sure we're on the correct place to get our encounter again. So we'll go, go ahead and burn out towards Minmus and there's an encounter okay so we are we are in the right direction still roughly there okay so let's pull this down to let's say we've got 762 we want our actual burn to be I don't know well let's let's just do 300 here or you know what we can do 350 sure Okay, and that's going to be, again, pure prograde. So let's just work forward and do that burn. That's a 34-second burn. That's fine. We'll get to test our nerve engine here. I recently learned if you hit F2, you can disable the HUD. So you can kind of get a nice visual without all the like clutter and the burning numbers and whatnot. I kind of like that. Uh, it's, it is offset almost the correct direction to balance the solar panel convenient. Yeah, it's much, much heavier though. Okay. Now then, uh, we are already facing prograde. We're ready to go. Let's go. Three, two, one. 
three, two, one, burn. What is that out there? What is that? So there's our nerve engine doing work. Okay, good start. Let's put another burn of 300 at our periapsis or 350. Uh, let's not go 350. Let's go to another 300. And let's see what that looks like. That pushes us out a little bit too far, actually, because then our period will be too high. So let's not do that quite that much. Let's do 200 instead. That's more manageable. Okay, let's warp to that. Okay. And let's just watch our period here. We, won't, we don't want it to be too big. We don't want it to be days and days. So we'll watch this closely. If it gets higher than like four hours or so, we'll kind of cut it off. Let's see. Facing prograde, SAS is on. Okay, here's another burn. Getting up there. I think we're going to be okay here. Okay, that's looking good. So now we set up our final maneuver from periapsis. And this has to get us our encounter. So let's see if we've set this up correctly. White. Somewhere along the way, we screwed up our inclination. Not quite sure how we did that. Oh, wait, we're not even outside the moon yet. Oh, I, I didn't go far enough. Hold on. Oh, there's a, there's a moon encounter. There was one there briefly. Okay, there's our, there's our encounter with... Uh, our friend Minmus. Looks like we're going a little bit too fast. Let's bring that back. And let's tweak that down a bit. Something like that looks pretty good and then we can just kind of move it a little bit left or right maybe. to be pretty much from periapsis here. Okay, so there's our encounter. Now if we tweak this left or right too much, what's happening there? That's a moon encounter. Hold on. Now, if we... That's actually slowing us down, I think. So, what can we do here? Hold on. Let's take, let's take a look at the moon here and see if we can, if we, if we can use this after all. Uh, let's focus on the moon, if we can. Why can I not focus the moon? Uh, Moho, Eve, Gilly, Curb, and the Moon. Okay, so if we come in here, what is our tra what's what's happening with our trajectory? We're coming like over the top of it and getting bent down. So 
So we would want to be on the outside of it. We'd want to be on the outside. Let's play around with this. I want to see if I can make this work. Let's go to maneuver one here. I want to see if I can figure this out. So let's go way down. And let's see if we go normal a bit, just a bit. And then we go, we want to go, we want our inclination a little bit lower, right? Maybe a lot lower. How do we get it to be around the side here? I'm, I'm finding it strange that it's moving it the way it's moving it. I would have thought going burning normal would get us vertically closer. It's actually moving us further away. Okay, well, we've lost we've lost that. So we're coming over the top of it is the problem. Hmm. I so to get a, a real a real gravity assist, we want to be coming around the the outside of it, I think. So I don't I don't think this is gonna be possible. I guess I guess we're gonna get like a little small assist here. It's gonna kind of mess up our mess us up a little bit. But I, yeah, I guess this is beyond me, guys. I, I'm not quite able to figure this out. I missed the notification. You got to bring it closer. You're doing it right. You just got to keep fiddling. Uh, to get the to get the gravity assist, I don't know, man. I think we're way too high. So our, if we look at our, because we, we set up the inclination with Minmus, so we'd have to burn a lot to bring ourselves down over here. Currently, this is bending us like our inclination downward which we don't want and i can't tell if it's giving us more uh more velocity or less i think at this point we just do this we've got our encounter with minmus set up so we'll go we'll do this burn and then halfway we will uh we'll do a correction to get into the polar orbit do inclination change at the nodes either ascending node or descending node reversed yeah, it's it's a little bit too much. We we're, we're not going to get any DV savings from the gravity assist if we spend it all setting it up. So I think we'll ignore this. Uh, we'll have a small interaction with it here, and we'll have our encounter with Minmus. Right? Where is our actual Minmus periapsis? Our encounter is out here. Okay. And then and then we have the escape. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna do this. I'm I don't know what's going on with the moon there, but we're not crashing into it, right? Our periapsis is We're not crashing into it. We're going over the top of it, so I think I'm fine with it. Yeah, we'll be six hundred and eighteen kilometers away. All right. Yeah, let's just let's just do this. So if we take a look here, we're just doing a pure prograde burn for 211.4 dV. Uh, we'll get close to that. Let's just get this done. Ah, yikes. That was not what I wanted to do. I hit the wrong button. I wanted to go here like this. So we're doing our, our current orbit of Kerbin, and then we'll do our burn here-ish and go out to towards Minmus, and then we'll fix that. There's something floating around out here. I don't know what it is. Oh, that's Minmus. It's just got a weird... Oh, it's got that weird shape because the science station is around it. Okay. Oh, what happened here? Oh, why is this it? This this is this is all wrong now. I gotta do it again. Something went wrong. 
This was around 211, right? Does that still get us our encounter? Yes. Okay. I don't know what happened there. Because I burned at the wrong time, I think. Use radial in and out to get you super close, then fiddle with normal and anti-normal. Yeah, DV burn loss, good point. I'm lagging again. Line of sight due to plasma. Be right back. Interesting. Okay, I don't know what that means. Okay, now, now we're all set. Let's get this going. So I would like to, to figure out how to do gravity assists at some point in the future, but it seems like the plane change stuff is too much for me right now. Okay, here's the line we're watching. I am gonna throttle this down a bit when we get close. Uh, I went a little bit too far, but that's okay. So we still have our encounter. Uh, let's focus in on Minmus here. And let's take a look at what our encounter actually is. So we're coming out way out here and we want to be in a polar orbit. So let's go ahead and there's our encounter. Let's set up our let's set up our burn, our correction burn right here, half halfway out. And now let's really start fiddling with this. Okay, so let's take the graphical editor and go really low here. Uh, maybe not quite that low. Let's come in nice and close here. And we want a polar orbit if we can get one. Let's check our periapsis here. 5,000 meters. Okay. So we need to burn anti-normal to push ourselves up a little bit. No, we need to burn normal to push ourselves up a little bit. And that gets us a really nice periapsis. We actually want it a little bit higher than that. Uh, so... Yes, 30,000. There we go. Okay, so this is perfect. We'll come in right over the planet, and then we'll do our retrograde burn here to, to get an orbit. There we go. Okay, and we'll bring that in. And that will be good. Okay. So we'll be in an interesting polar orbit around Minmus, and we'll be able to do our survey. So there's our two maneuvers. Very cool. All right. So the first one is a very fine-tuned maneuver. Let's dial the throttle way down so we can control that and get that as close to accurate as possible. So at 1, we're looking at a 3-minute burn. That's a little bit much. 2.5, 1 minute 13. That works for me. Okay. So there's our first burn coming up. And we can see our solar panel is filling up uh, our battery charge. We've got plenty of charge. I wish this, this thing wasn't offset like this, but I screwed that up in the VAB and didn't notice it. So, oh well. Uh, let's fast forward. And we're ready for our burn here. In 54 seconds. Now, for this burn, we cannot use the prograde marker. We have to have a little tiny bit of normal as well. I may not be able to get this exactly right. We want to be on the maneuver node as opposed to directly on the prograde marker. And that's about as close as I can get it, I think. really doesn't want to move left or right for some reason. Okay, well, here we go with the burn. Okay. 
For some reason, I don't have maneuvering. I'm not able to... Huh, I'm not sure what's going on there. My reaction wheels don't seem to be working. Either that or they're just really, really slow. I'll have to check that out in a second here. Yeah, I can't, I can't move the... I'm not sure why. My SAS, I'm not able to change my attitude, my orientation. I can't track this. So we've lost out on the normal, I think, component. And we're not going to be where we want to be. Let me finish this, and then we'll try and... We'll probably have to do another correction burn in a second here. Yeah, we lost the whole normal component. Cannot delete maneuver node. Control locked. Oh, wait a minute. That's why. Damn it. I forgot to extend my... I forgot to extend my antennas. That's why I was screwed up. Oh, gosh. What a nightmare. Okay, well. We're going to fix this now. Let's see what we ended up with. We only burned like 20 dV there. Okay, so we're... We're in the right direction. We just need to now do another correction maneuver here to get the normal component. I probably would have been better off separating them anyway, so this probably works out. Uh, let's go to the map node, and where are we? You know what? We can even just do it manually. Uh, let's just point normal here. And let's go back to Minmus Focus. And let's just do a little bit of a burn here. We want this around, we want this over 25,000. There we go. 30,000 should be good. So with the surveyor, you need to be in a certain orbit. We might actually want just a little bit more. There we go. That's probably good. And then we'll add a maneuver here to circularize. Okay. Uh, so 38 and 50. Let's kick that up a little bit. 37, 39. That's, that's pretty good. Okay. So now we're, now we're set, man. There's so many things you got to remember in this game. Uh, let's go back to the surveyor one here. And let's do our next burn here. So for this, for this, wait a minute, wait, wait, this, this can't be right. We need to go to maneuver one. Oh, we, yeah, no, 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 we're fine. We're fine. So I forgot that I did that manually. I did the normal thing manually. Okay. Pro trick, you can do those burns at any time. You don't actually have to wait until the point you set to execute. Yeah, I just did the, uh, the normal part manually there. Um, let's come back to the ship and fix our thrust limiter for this upcoming maneuver. Twenty seconds, maybe seventy-five. Twenty-seven seconds. Fifty, should we say? There we go. Forty seconds, and this is going to be a retrograde burn. Oh, that's so much better. I, I, I wish I had remembered to put the, uh, put the antennas out. Okay. Well, I also wish that thing wasn't offset. But what can you do? Uh, so now we're good. Let's warp forward. God damn it. Why do I keep hitting the wrong frigging button? I keep hitting Z. That is the... Ugh, that's the second time I've done that. Now where are we? Okay, it doesn't look like it affected too much. Gosh, that's that's really ridiculous. What am I trying to do here? I'm trying to hit F2. Okay, there's Minmus. And here comes our maneuver. All right. Man. 
I am making all kinds of mistakes today. It's like, a, I don't know, maybe I'm in a rush. I am eager to do this survey. And I feel like I've done Minmus a, a bunch of times before, but I, I guess rushing is not a good look. It's uh, really screwing me up. Okay, so we're facing retrograde, and here comes our burn. 40 seconds. Oh look, we're not we're not actually getting into orbit right now with this, so we will need to go a little bit further. Yeah, it's because I it's because I hit the Z button out there. Pushed us way too far. And I don't think I have my polar orbit anymore. Or maybe I do. I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on anymore. Okay. Yeah, we don't have the polar orbit either. Ah, I screwed everything up with that Z button hit. Okay, so let's come over here. And... Let's just, uh, let's circularize the orbit. Man, I screwed everything up today. That's better. And then we're going to have to burn a lot of fuel to get into the high enough inclination to do the survey. Okay. Let's stay retrograde here and let's fast forward. Okay, and we will go ahead a little bit, do another one of these burns. That looks good. And now we need to get our inclination above 80 degrees here. So uh, we will set up a new maneuver node. And we'll just throw some normal on there. And let's drag this around and see which gets... Where's the descending node? So 33... 35.9, something like that. And let's just throw more, throw more in. There we go. 82 degrees for 250 dV because I because I hit that Z button for one second. And then we're going way too fast as well. So, geez. I can get something like that going and then slow down. Let's just let's just get through this. This is this is a slog, man. I've I completely screwed the pooch on this whole set of maneuvers. point where we need to be pointing and let's do this burn And then since we're right here at Perry, let's go ahead and fix our orbit. Probably should have combined these. That would have been more efficient, but what can you do? Okay. Now let's do some more normal, perhaps. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we can just do that here. I will, I will quick save briefly because I'm not 100% sure this is right. But let's try this. Yeah, that looks good. We're getting our inclination up there. Okay, that's a high enough inclination. 
And now we can face retrograder again and get everything nice and good. Okay, so uh, we're between 25 and 90 or so. I think that's right. So I think we're finally in the polar orbit we need. We burned through a lot of DV. I made a lot of mistakes, but we got here in the end. Let's go to the craft and see if we can do our orbital survey. Perform orbital survey. Starting transmission, uploading data. Research and development. Received orbital science survey data for Minmus. 25 science added. Okay, so we finally got there. And then we can toggle the overlay here. I'm not sure what that, uh, what that means. Color, inverse, monochrome, heat map. Cut off. How does this work? Do I have to be on the sun side to see this? Uh, oh, wow. Oh, it's in the map view. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is neat. Okay. So, what? this was originally at zero, right? That's fantastic. So we've got a, a basic survey of, of Minmus now. Color monochrome, color inverse. Heat map green. Ooh, there's a heat map. Okay. Heat map blue. Oh, or resources or 4.99% average. And let's toggle the cutoff at 60 and see what that does. That reduces more of the planet. If we go up to 90, I'm not sure exactly what this is. All right, well, I'm going to have to figure out how this works. Let's go back to the heat map. Let's go up to 90%. So does that mean that these places have 90% ore, or how does this work? I'm going to have to watch a tutorial on this. Anyway, guys, we actually, despite all my mistakes and fumbling, uh, and my failed attempt to get a gravity assist from the moon, we've made it to Minmus, we've got into our polar orbit, and we've done our survey. So uh, the first step towards building our refueling station on Minmus is complete. And if we go to our tracking station and bring up Minmus, we now have ore, 5.3% on the surface. Oh, and we can kind of play around with this as well. Color, style, cutoff percent. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not 100% clear on exactly how this works. Okay, wait a minute. So if I select or then we have Okay, so here's their heat map. There's Oh, there's three different styles. All right, so there's like latitude lines and then there's these like these these dots. And then there's a straight up heat map. Okay. Now, what does the cutoff do? So it's making things disappear. Cut off 90%. So as we kind of go lower, we start to see more things appear. Yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Looks like these green places might be the places with either the highest or lowest concentration of ore here. I like that, I think. This is neat. I've never seen this before. So this is my first time interacting with this. Uh, let me see. Let me catch up with the chat here. 
Senor Hepurio says, hello, my phone charge got zero, but I'm back. I know how to use. You need to go to the tracking station and change the color to green. Green and red. The green means low ore. GG. The red means high ore. Use cutoff to remove the visual showing low amounts of ore. Okay, so green is bad and red is good. Got it. So we cut off anything that has less than 10%. So green is low ore. So those air, those green areas had less ore. And so when we said don't show anything with less than 40% ore, those areas disappeared. Okay. So if we go to 90%, any of these places that's red, I guess, we could land a lander there. It looks like this is probably one of the best places. This location, this flats location here... Seems like one of the best places to land. You just land there, and you mine a bunch of ore. It's got 90% ore efficiency, or presence. Concentration, perhaps, is the word we want to look for. So we just land there, mine a bunch of ore, convert it all into fuel, and then launch it into orbit as a refilling tank. All right, guys, this was not my best uh, not my best stream ever. I made a lot of mistakes, um, but I appreciate you guys being here. And I'm really happy that we finally got this thing to work uh, and learning more about the game. This this new refueling station idea, this is going to provide us content for several streams. Uh, and it's going to fuel our ability to travel much further. So I will tell you that long term, after we get the fueling station set up here, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work on a relay station, an interplanetary communications relay. So we're going to set up a number of satellites orbiting Kerbin pretty far out. Uh, and we're going to set up so that we can communicate with a probe all the way to Ike. And then we're going to go repeat this. We're going to send another one of these surveyors out. We're going to survey Ike, and we're going to set up a refueling station there. And so traveling between Kerbin and Duna is going to become much, much, much more feasible because we're going to be able to refuel at both ends of the stop. 90% of the 5.3. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's still, it's still not great, but... We have some we have some tar we have a target now for our, our refueling station. Anyway, guys, that's gonna be it for today. Thank you all for being here. Senor Hepulyu, uh, Radu, uh, Michael Linsenmeyer, uh, Distracticus was here, uh, Radu, and who else? I think uh, we didn't see we saw the seal shark was here. That was great. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for being here and for your comments and your advice. And sorry this the the execution was so sloppy today. I'll try and improve on the next stream. Uh, but good luck on whatever it is you're doing, and have a happy Sunday, and we'll see you next time. Take care.